What's happening? It's Shane here and it's your favorite time of the year. We are doing the yearly tier lists and this particular one is going to be the health degree tier list for 2022. So we're going to be going over all different levels of health degrees from associate level degrees that take about two to three years or so, all the way up to doctoral level degrees that might take eight years or even longer. And I saw your suggestions in the last video I did where I didn't include certain careers, certain degrees that you wanted me to. And so I made sure to include the ones that a lot of people suggested. So make sure you comment comment down below if you don't see the degree that you wanted me to talk about in this year's video. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead, gently tap the like button. Let's set a goal of a thousand likes on this video. And also, if you haven't done it already, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and let's jump right into it, guys. First one on this list is one we've never talked about before, which is health-related business type degrees at the bachelor level. So something like hospital administration or health administration. So of course, I don't have time to go over the statistics in this video because it's a tier list video. There's way too many that we have to go over. It would be like 30, 40 minutes. So I'm just gonna say when it comes to this one, not a great amount of demand. Uh, the payment is okay, not as good as a lot of other health-related degrees, though. It's also a little bit weird because a lot of the time, people who rise up to become, you know, administrators, managers, etc., in a hospital setting are people who were nurses and doctors and pharmacists, etc., and not people who got a business degree in healthcare administration because, let's be honest, the people who know healthcare the best are the people who actually work in healthcare. But with that being said, it's not a horrible degree and it can also be a pretty good option for you if you wanna maybe double major in that one while you're getting a health degree. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be a doctor of nursing practice or DNP. Now this is basically a nurse practitioner at the doctorate level. So I've talked about nurse practitioner quite a few times before. That is a master's level degree. This one is one step up at the doctoral level. So very similar to nurse practitioner, just more medical training. Now if you're doing this to get that extra knowledge, to get that extra training, that's great, can totally be worth it for you. However, generally speaking, you're not gonna be making all that much more than just a nurse practitioner at the master's level, although it may in the future kind of move towards uh, more people getting their doctorate. So if you want to get it kind of as a safety net, that might be a good option. But overall, I'm going to go ahead and put this one into A tier. Still a very good option, but nurse practitioner on its own is probably good enough. Next one on the list is going to be a doctor of podiatric medicine or also known as DPM. And this is what you would get in order to become a podiatrist. This is a doctor who specializes in the treatment and care of the feet. Another one that we haven't talked about on the channel yet, and it can be a very good option uh, in terms of the pay at the doctoral level. It's decent, not amazing. And in terms of the demand here, pretty good, but also again, doesn't pop off the page. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. Next one on the list is going to be a doctor of osteopathic medicine, also known as DO. And this is very similar to a medical doctor or an MD. In fact, they're actually merging these two tracks uh, here within the next five to 10 years or so. So medical doctor and DO will essentially be the same thing. However, if you look at the statistics, DOs do make slightly less than MDs. So for whatever reason, they're slightly less respected. But the counteracting side to that is it is slightly easier to get into DO school than it is to get into medical school. So there are some very slight differences between MD and DO. Uh, I'm not saying it should be that way. You know, I'm not saying that MDs should be more respected than DOs. That's just kind of the way that it is. And within the next five to 10 years, it might be that nobody even notices a difference at all. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put DO into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be dentist assistant. This is basically an associate or two year level degree. And it's pretty good when it comes to the stats for a two year degree, you know, you make pretty decent money. There's not a whole lot of demand for it though. So if you compare this to like all associates degrees, uh, it would be relatively good. But when you're comparing it to other health degrees that are already just really good, health degrees in general are just good across the board. Uh, I have to put this one into D tier. 
Next one on the list is going to be dental hygienist. So this is basically a two to three year degree as well, except it makes way, way better money. Like they make 70, $80,000 a year. It's incredible. Now there's also a decent amount of demand for this one. Um, for the two to three years that it takes for you to get into this, it can be a fantastic choice. It can be a fantastic career to go into. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be dentist. Uh, this is a doctoral level degree. I think everybody is familiar with what dentists do. They make extremely good money, probably the second best out of everybody on this list. However, you do have to go to school for the full eight years generally uh, in order to get your doctorate. You also have to go deep into debt. It's one of those careers that requires you to go super deep into debt, not just student loan debt, but also if you wanna start your own practice, you're probably gonna to have to take out like a million dollar business loan as well. Money please, my money. But with that being said, it can be worth it. Uh, I'm personally not a huge fan of degrees where you have to go super, super deep into debt and you're probably not even gonna break even until you're in your mid to late 30s. But that's just me. I'm somebody who wants to enjoy my late 20s and early 30s and I don't wanna have to be worrying about being deep into debt. But with that being said, for the right type of person, this can be pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be a diagnostic medical sonographer. This is another associate level degree. It takes about two to three years and you can make really good money with this one as well. Somewhere around $70,000 a year plus. Medical degrees, medical careers, some of the only professions out there where you can do like two years of schooling and then you know, you're know you gonna be making really ridiculously good money right off the bat. So this one is going to go into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be dietetics and nutritionists. Really cool career. I think diet is incredibly important. Unfortunately, the statistics on this one are not that great. And so for that reason, I'm gonna to have to put this one into D tier. Next one on the list is going to be a health and wellness general degree. Another one I think it's super important, but unfortunately the statistics are very bad, especially when you compare it to other health related degrees. So for that reason, I have to put this one into F tier. Next one is going to be a medical doctor or MD. Already talked about this one before when we went over DO, but yeah, they make the most money out of any profession on this entire list. It also takes the most commitment. So generally you're gonna have four years of undergrad, four years of med school, and then a residency that lasts anywhere from three to seven years. And then on top of that, some people will end up doing a fellowship, which can last another one to three years. So you're looking at potentially up to 18 years of schooling and training before you start to make the full medical doctor pay. But for the right personality, this can be a great choice. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be the classic nurse. This is gonna be like a bachelor level nurse. Great career, very flexible. You can get like a two year nursing degree, make decent money right off the bat. Then you get to go back to school after working for a few years, get a four year nursing degree, make even more money, have even more abilities and responsibilities. Then if you feel like it, you can go back to school again, get a master's in nursing, and now you're making ridiculously good money. And if you feel like it, you can even get more training and get a doctorate. So this one is going to go into S tier. Next one on the list is one I just spoke about, which is the master's. Uh, it's also known as a nurse practitioner at the master's level. You can prescribe, diagnose just like a doctor. You don't have to be under the supervision of a doctor. And one thing that's really cool about being a nurse practitioner is it generally is respected and recognized worldwide. So if you're somebody who wants to maybe go work in England or go work in Australia, there's a good chance that you will be able to with an American nurse practitioner degree. This one is also going to go into S tier. Next one on the list is going to be occupational therapy. This is usually going to be a master's level degree. Now, occupational therapy is very similar to physical therapy. Uh, there's just a few key differences and I'm gonna go over that one next just so you can kind of see them side by side. But yeah, occupational therapy is more at the master's level whereas physical therapy is moving towards being more of a doctoral level degree. Occupational therapy and physical therapy, you're both going to be working with patients and trying to 
to help them get better, patients who have usually had some type of injury. With occupational therapy, there's more of an emphasis on helping patients actually do things, whereas with physical therapy, there's more of an emphasis on helping patients strengthen their bones, muscles, tendons, ligaments, etc. But very similar, when it comes to the statistics, physical therapy is slightly better. Both of these have very, very high job satisfaction, um, probably the highest on this entire list and probably the highest job satisfaction period. And they both make relatively decent money. However, the statistics don't pop off the page. And so for that reason, I'm gonna put both of them into A tier. Next one on the list, I'm also going to be going over occupational therapy assistant as well as physical therapy assistant. And there is a difference between these two. So again, pretty self-explanatory here. You're gonna be assisting physical therapists as a physical therapy assistant. You'll be assisting occupational therapists as an occupational therapy assistant. But with that being said, the statistics, the numbers for occupational therapy assistant is better than physical therapy assistant. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put occupational therapy assistant in B tier and physical therapy assistant into C tier. Next one on the list I'm gonna be talking about is an optician. This is one where it is basically like an associate level degree. Sometimes you can even get into it with a certificate. So this one takes around one to two years. And basically you're gonna be helping people with really basic eye care, right? So things like getting their eyeglasses fitted. But the numbers on this one, especially when you compare it to other health related degrees, not that great. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be an optometrist and they would get a doctor of optometry degree, which is OD. This is a doctorate degree that is usually gonna take somewhere between six to eight years total. The numbers for this one are pretty good, but I've actually been doing a lot of research on this lately. And because of the fact that people are spending so much time uh, right in front of a computer screen, uh, basically what's happening is people's vision is getting worse like much faster because of the fact that people are spending so much time watching TV being in front of computer screens their vision is rapidly deteriorating so last year I think I ranked this one a little bit lower but actually I'm much more bullish on this degree now after doing this research I think the statistics are pretty good this time but I think they're gonna be much better five to ten years from now so for that reason I'm gonna go ahead and put optometrist into a tier. Next one on the list is going to be pharmacist. This is a PharmD degree. This is a doctor of pharmacy, so the degree that I got. Now pharmacists have some of the highest pays out of the entire list. I think it's maybe number three or number four out of all the ones on this list. Because of the fact that the regulation bodies on pharmacy schools are just letting schools pop up left and right and churn pharmacists out, you know, graduating classes of 150 or more in many cases, Pharmacy has begun to get saturated. Now there are certain things that are happening in the pharmacy world like provider status. Uh, this would open up a ridiculous amount of jobs if this gets passed. And then on the other hand, many people think that the pharmacy regulation boards are going to crack down on the schools, very similar to what medical schools did. So there's a lot of uncertainty in the future in terms of what is going to happen in the pharmacy career. But with that being said, it is still very high paying. Uh, and for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in into high B tier status. Next one on the list is going to be physician assistant, now known as physician associate. And this is one that is probably my favorite on the entire list. They make really good money. They have incredible demand. You can prescribe and diagnose under the supervision of a doctor. One of those careers that has very high job satisfaction as well. A physician associate, fantastic maybe the best on this entire list, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into S tier. Next one on the list is going to be radiation therapist. This is kind of an associate level degree. It would usually take about three years or so. And the money here is incredible. A lot of the time they're gonna be making well over $80,000 a year. The demand for this one is also pretty decent. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be a radiologic or MRI technologist. Now this is one where the numbers really don't pop off the board at you, but it's also not horrible. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into C tier. In other videos, I go much more in depth on these, of course. Um, you know, so definitely check those out. But if you haven't done it already, go ahead, gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you and I will see you next time.